Hi, it's Sherry. Welcome back to my channel, Canterbury Cottage. Thank you so much for deciding to watch my video today. I think it's a good one. I tried to come up with as many projects as I could, repurposing the parts from one broken chair. I didn't buy anything in the making of this video. But to be fair, I did supplement some of the projects with other things that I had around the house. As a matter of fact, I ran out of time before I ran out of chair parts. So you might see some of those parts again in a future video. Well, enough talking. Let's get started. A dear friend was getting rid of a broken chair and wondered if I might not be able to make some things out of it. So I challenged myself to make at least 10 things using the parts from this chair. So I disassembled it first by unscrewing all the screws that I could find and using a mallet to loosen up the joints. I used my jigsaw in one or two places. I cut out the large piece of caning from the back of the chair using a pair of scissors. Then I cut it into neat strips. I soaked the strips in water for just a minute to soften them up a bit. The water made the cane much more flexible, and so it was quite easy to hot glue the strips around some glass vases. Because the caning had been heavily painted on both sides, there was no raveling or fraying of the edges. These were so easy to make, and I think they turned out super cute. I still had some caning left and decided to try putting it in an old frame that I had. It was the right size, but I didn't like the color, so I gave it a couple coats of chalk paint in the color Fawn. I distressed it a bit with sandpaper and then applied a coat of clear wax to seal it. I cut the caning to fit inside the frame snugly, and then I attached it just using hot glue. I applied some additional hot glue on the back side of the caning too. I cut the stems off of some fake succulents and stuck them through the holes in the caning. I just gave it a good dollop of hot glue on the back side to hold it in place. I also added a sawtooth hanger on the back side. This was another super easy project that I think turned out so cute. I like the way that it looks hanging, but I also think that it's adorable just leaning up against books on a shelf. The top section of the chair back had a pretty flower design in it, and so I knew I wanted to use it for something pertaining to plants or flowers. After painting and distressing it, I filled in the seam left from the caning with Elmer's glue and twine. I applied a coat of white wax to seal the chalk paint. I measured out the placement for five eye hooks and drilled small holes to make it easier to screw them in. I also attached two D-rings for hanging purposes. I decided I needed to paint the back side, too. I cut a strip of florist wire, which I wrapped around the top of a little bottle, and then I wrapped the wire through the eye hook on the chair back. I twisted the wire around to make sure that it was secure, and then I added little sprigs of fake plants and flowers to each of the bottles. I also liked the idea of hanging dried herbs from the chair back. The chair had a number of spindles, and I wanted to use them in ways that you might not have seen before. So I cut one spindle in half using my table saw. 
I cut the spindle half into two pieces and painted them white. I also painted an old mirror that I had. When the paint was dry, I attached the spindle pieces to the sides of the mirror using wood glue. When the wood glue was dry, I filled in the gaps with some caulk to give it a cleaner look. I distressed it a bit using some sandpaper, and I decided to attach the front part of an old hair barrette to the top corner using some super glue. Those spindles sure did make that old mirror much more interesting. It has a sawtooth hanger on the back, so you could hang this mirror on the wall, or you could just sit it on a bookshelf like I did here. To repurpose the chair seat, I decided to turn it into a footstool. I wanted a rectangular shape, not the trapezoid shape of the chair seat. So it was necessary to remove the staples so that I could remove the fabric and the foam. Originally, I was going to cut down the piece of particle board that came with the chair, but then I saw this old box in my garage and decided to use that instead. I cut down two of the chair spindles to create four legs for the footstool. I gave both the box and the legs a couple coats of spray paint, which I later covered with a coat of white chalk paint. I used a large knife to cut the foam to fit the top of the box. I took the lid off the box to make it easier to upholster. I laid down the fabric from the chair, added a piece of quilt batting, and then put the foam on top of that. To start stapling, I use one staple in the center of each of the four sides, and then I check to make sure that I like the fabric alignment before I add any more staples. When I get to a corner, I pull on the fabric, making a little pleat, and then staple it. I pull it some more, making another little pleat, and add another staple, and keep doing that until I get all the way around the corner. I reattached the lid to the box, and then I marked on the bottom of the box where I wanted the four legs to go. Using a drill bit the same size as my screws, I drilled a hole in each of the four corners of the box and in the center of each of the four legs. Screwing from inside of the box, I attached all of the legs. I distressed both the legs and the box using 150 grit sandpaper. For added interest, I added an old drawer handle to the front of the box. The box had a number of holes, scratches, and dents, which I chose not to fill to give the footstool a more rustic appearance. I may reupholster it because I'm not crazy about the plaid fabric, but I do love that it has hidden storage. Another friend was getting rid of this old brass chandelier, and I thought I might be able to spice it up with some spindles. I removed the wiring, the fake candles, the chain, and finally the metal rod that ran through the center of the light fixture. I cut one of the chair legs to fit snugly inside where the metal rod had been. I used a screw with a large washer to permanently attach the chair leg to the top and bottom portions of the light fixture. I reattached the candle pans using super glue. I also glued on the bottom piece from the candle tube. I took off the decorative glass piece while I spray painted the chandelier and I accidentally broke the glass. I had purchased this magazine rack for $4 at a thrift store and decided to use some of its parts too. 
I sanded down eight of the magazine rack spindles and drilled a small hole at the top of each spindle. I ran florist wire through the hole in each spindle and then ran the wire through the holes in the chandelier where crystals had once hung. I twisted the wire a bit to make sure that the spindle stayed in place and I decided to distress the entire piece using some 220 grit sandpaper. At the last minute, I decided that I wanted to put some white wax on the spindles to help them blend in better with the white of the chandelier. I hung it over the cabinet in my foyer for an unexpected surprise. I think it will grab people's attention when they come in the front door. The four pieces of wood that surrounded the seat of the chair were straight, so I knew I could easily turn them into a box of some kind. I just laid them out and then used a pencil to mark where I needed to cut. Once I had all of the pieces cut out, I attached them using wood glue because I don't have a nail gun. Let the glue dry for an hour or two or overnight, and then you can add nails or screws for a more permanent hold. You can fill in any gaps with wood fill or with caulk. I decided to make a handle for my wood box using the handle off of the old magazine rack. I marked where I needed to cut it on my miter saw. I attached the shorter handle using wood glue and screws. I painted the box with white chalk paint. I sanded down the handle and decided to leave it in its natural wood state. For something a little different, I added these succulent candles inside the box and then added a bag of black rocks from Dollar Tree. I like the combination of white chalk paint with light, natural wood tones, and I think it goes so well in so many different styles. I still had one of the large front legs of the chair, and I didn't want to just make a candle stand because we've all seen that so many times. So I decided to make a cutting board stand instead Using a drill bit the same size as my screw, I drilled holes in the middle of the chair leg and in the middle of a square piece of wood. I attached the two pieces using wood glue and one screw. I drilled holes at the top of the chair leg on opposite sides and then filled the holes with wood glue. I inserted small dowel rods that I had taken from the handle of the magazine rack. I painted the entire piece with two coats of white chalk paint. I distressed it with 220 grit sandpaper, and then I applied a coat of clear wax to seal the chalk paint. I think this is just adorable. I realize that it won't hold a large cutting board. But how often do you need a cutting board to cut just an onion or a clove of garlic? I had two shorter spindles left that had supported the chair's armrests, and I wanted to use them to create some kind of unique picture frame. I drilled a large hole near the top of each spindle. I then took a spindle from the magazine rack and using wood glue, I attached the smaller spindle to the two holes in the larger spindles. Even though you see me using super glue here, it didn't take to the older, unfinished piece of scrap wood. So ultimately, I did use wood glue to glue the spindles together and to glue the spindles to the base piece of wood. Then I painted the entire piece with two coats of white chalk paint. I also painted a picture frame from Dollar Tree. I printed out one of my favorite quotes to put in the frame. I'll put a link in the description box if you'd like to print it out too. 
I drilled two small holes along the top of the frame and then screwed in two eye hooks. I ran twine through the eye hooks and then tied the frame to the smaller spindle. I think this is a fun way to display a favorite quote or a favorite photo. I'm going to have to hunt down some more spindles because I really want to make another one of these and paint it green so I can put it in my kitchen. So this project is actually made from leftover parts from the magazine rack and not the chair but I didn't want those parts to go to waste either. I reattached the base of the handle back to where it had originally been. I used wood glue and one screw at each end. I cut the spindles down using both ends for variety. I laid them out in a pleasing arrangement and then I used wood fill to fill in all of the holes where I didn't put a spindle. Once the wood fill was dry, I sanded the surface smooth using my orbital sander, and then I used wood glue to permanently attach the spindles. I lightly tapped each spindle with my hammer to make sure they were firmly in place. I sprayed on one coat of primer, and then I followed that with two coats of Rust-Oleum Ultra Matte White spray paint. I attached two D-rings to hang it from. It could be hung horizontally or vertically. I still had the entire base of the magazine rack, which looked like a breakfast tray to me. So this was going to be an easy project. All I needed to do was fill all of the spindle holes with some wood fill, sand it smooth, and then give it a couple coats of chalk paint. I applied a coat of white wax to seal and protect the chalk paint. I think it makes a sweet breakfast tray, but you could also leave it out all of the time and use it as a riser to display various pieces of home decor. I knew when I disassembled the chair that somehow I wanted to make use of the wheels that were on the chair. So I cut the ends off of each of the four legs so that I could attach them to something else. I used my miter saw to cut them all to the exact same length. I could have attached the legs to the particle board from the chair seat, but I prefer real wood, so I screwed them on to an old cabinet door. Then, to give it a more substantial look, I took four shims, cut them to size, and then used wood glue to attach them around the edges of the cabinet door. I didn't add any nails, which might have split the shims. However, I did add extra wood glue on the inside edges. I also used some wood filler to fill the crack in the corners where the shims met up. I painted the wood with two coats of green chalk paint, and I painted the wheels with black spray paint. Then I distressed it and gave it a coat of Waverly's Antiquing Wax. Which, by the way, my Walmart is no longer carrying the Waverly paint line. Is this happening everywhere? And has anybody tried the new paint line that Walmart is carrying? Luckily, I had just enough of the Waverly Moss chalk paint to finish this little plant stand. Thank you all so much for watching. And for always leaving such kind comments and thoughtful suggestions, I really truly appreciate you all. I know how precious your time is, and I try to make my videos as informative as possible. So I hope that you found today's video helpful in some small way. Well, that's all for today. Until next Tuesday, bye bye for now.